So now we'll take a look at what happens when we create a more interesting current density. So we'll leave the boundary condition set to basically zero, and then we'll create our, our density function here. What we're gonna do in this part is we're gonna try to model a wire. So basically we would like to create the current density for a wire where the current is flowing up along the y-axis. So we're only getting a value along the y-axis, not along the x-axis. And we want it to move up the center of the square. So basically we're giving the wire a certain radius. If we are inside that radius, then we have this current density. If we're outside the radius, then we have zero current density. So this is kind of the equivalent of a point charge where you've got the charge of the current defined in one area and it's zero in the others. Um, so we'll get our boundary conditions set up here. We are setting those up the same way as last time. Um, and so the star of the show this time is gonna be that current density. Um, in this case, I'm setting my target to be an absolute 10 to the minus three, just because uh, it doesn't make sense to scale it by the problem if they're starting out as zeros, right? Um, so when we run this, this is the graph we end up with. So our radius of the wire, let's remind ourselves what that was. Our wire has a radius of 0.5. So from zero out to 0.5, so this is two, that makes this about here one. So our radius of a half goes out basically, you know, one arrow width here. So right along here is where our wire is, uh, you, and our current is pointing upward. So you can see the tendency of the magnetic vector potential is gonna be to point along the direction of the current flow. Uh, while we are inside the wire, it looks like it is uh, pretty strong. And then as soon as you leave the wire, the magnitude starts to die off. So A tends to point in the direction of the current. Um, and it's gonna die off the farther away you get from the current. Uh, of course, we can see that change if we wanted to, say, increase the radius of the wire that gives us more current flowing through in total. Okay, let's see what happens to our graph here. We should expect to see the central region get wider. And that's exactly what we get. We now have a little bit wider wire. So we've got uh, more arrows on the inside and then it's gonna last for just a little bit longer as we go away from the wire. Um, another problem we can look at, let's suppose we took four of those wires and we put them in a loop. So here I've got a very similar setup where we've got um, a, a wire along a right edge of the loop, left edge, top edge, and bottom edge. So we've got now these regions defined where we have these wires that have a radius of a half and that are five uh, units long on one side. So it's like instead of having one wire, we now have current going around in a loop. Now we saw previously that we expect the magnetic vector potential to follow along the direction of the loop. So we expect to see a, we expect to see the magnetic vector potential going around this way. Let's see if that's what we get. Uh, when we run this, here is the graph we end up with. Sure enough, and this is where our loop is in terms of the current. And so we see that the magnetic vector potential is flowing along the same direction as the current. And of course, when we leave the wire, it tends to get weaker. It gets weaker as well on the inside. Uh, so we get these shorter arrows here and the longest arrows here on the inside of the loop. All right, last one we'll take a look at um, is we're gonna change the direction of the current. We're now gonna have the current come out of the page. So instead of the current going along the X and Y axes, we're gonna have the current come out along the Z axis. So we're gonna have a wire, again, radius of a half, but it's now gonna have the current coming out of the screen towards you with this JZ component, which means our magnetic vector potential is gonna point along the Z direction. So this is actually a little bit easier problem to solve because we only have one component. See, we have the AZ component. We don't have an X and Y component because A has to point in the same direction as the uh, as the current density. So this actually makes the computation a little bit easier. This is changing the geometry from what we set up uh, on the board last episode. And what you end up with is this diagram for the AZ. So remember, this is now showing you AZ. So the stronger this is, the more magnetic vector potential is pointing out towards you. The weaker it is, the less magnetic vector potential there is pointing out towards you. Here's what it looks like overhead. You can see it forms this nice little circle around the wire. So remember, our wire has a radius of a half, so that's coming out to here. So that's really where it starts to die off is right at the one half mark uh, away from the center.
So I hope that's helpful to you in terms of visualizing the magnetic vector potential. I know that's often a challenge for students is visualizing this weird field. Uh, next time what we'll do is look at how we turn this magnetic vector potential into the magnetic field.